this at this point. Now he's admitted that this is a gimmick. Absolutely. I've known him as a studio manager. I've welcomed this fight for the last four years. Actually, going back to my career, my first, my second professional fight, he was offered to me. So I've accepted this fight four times before, and uh, he has declined each and every time. And I'm going to be on, I'm being 100% honest with you guys. If I wasn't the undisputed champion of the world, this fight would not be happening. You know, if roles were reversed, this fight would not happen. So, you know, he had, he's, he's choosing to fight this fight because he's the only fight left. So, you know, it is what it is, but at the end of the day, you know, he's going to have to be locked in real quick. What is he getting out of that? He's getting that out he thinks it's an insult, but it's not an insult at all. You know, uh, just like every every kid growing up, we all have nicknames. You know, and uh, when I decided to go into wrestling at the age of 15, you know, my name was a little tough for my coach. And I'm in Dallas, Texas. My coach is an old Marine, you know, buzz hair, big, you know, um, Marine guy. He was just like, I'm not going to say that. Um, you look like a Marty, I'm going to call you Marty. So, I'm like, I'm this little 5'2", 103 pound kid, and I'm like, sure, coach, all right. You know, I was in there to learn, and uh, you know, the one thing he's failing to realize, and by he, he's thinking it's an insult, but the reason he knows that name is because I continue to thrive and excel at what I was doing. Think of it, if you have a kid and they, have, they, they suck at whatever they're doing at that particular point in time, they just, you know, you grow, you outgrow them. We're humans, we evolve. But I continue to accelerate. I continue to get better and better. So more and more people knew the name. So now, it's not just in high school, my whole teammate, and now everyone across the state is calling me that. And now it's colleges that are recruiting me. And when the coaches call, they're like, hey, we're looking for this Kamaru kid we're going to talk to my high school coach. And he's like, oh, Marty? And then now they're calling me Marty. And now he bleeds over to college. So I'm actually glad that he knows the name because that means I've done something right. What is it you just about No, he has, uh, listen, I'm not I'm not that big of a political guy, honestly, um, so I'm not going to pretend that I am. Uh, I know that a lot of people are unhappy with the president and what he's doing and what he's done, but, you know, I don't know the man, you know, so um, I'm not just going to judge the man based on the color of his skin, so I, I don't know the man, but, you know, in pertaining to Kobe Covington, uh, like, he's already came out and said that this was a gimmick. First of all, I didn't have to sell my soul just to get the attention of new people. You know, I put my hard work in, and, and this is what a true American is about. You know, I, I grind, grind it from the bottom. I put all the work in, and now I'm sitting up here, the undisputed champion of the world, in a position where he wants to be. So it just goes through a test to the differences between us. Mark, you didn't mean that shit. On paper, people think it's evenly matched, but both, I mean, it, it's crazy. We're both 15 and 1. Those one lone defeats are to a guy that he'd be the guy that I'd be. So, on paper, it seems evenly matched, but, you know, when these guys step in there with me, they're stepping in that cage with an African lion, and uh, they quickly realize very soon that we're very, very different. No, absolutely not. Like, whenever you see me get tired, I've got stamina too. You know, it's when you step inside that octagon at that point, it's all about the mind and how you can use the mind, how you can see what's happening, how you can adapt to what's happening. He showed stamina against all those lesser guys that he's beat. I want to see that stamina when you get to fight me. Tomorrow, what point did Colby, in your mind, first move across the line? Man, he's crossed the line uh, a couple of times, uh, but um, if I could really remember, because I've known of him, uh, if I could really remember, like I said, my second professional fight he was offered to me, and he turned it down. And without even thinking he love it, I'm just a struggling fighter trying to make some money by fighting. Um, but once we first got into the UFC, he, uh, he, that's, you know, when I guess when he started with his persona, it, kinda, it wasn't nowhere near like that. To the height that it is now, but he kind of started saying a few things and um, about me, but nothing major. But he only he was only saying those because he saw a threat. He saw that I was getting the publicity, I was getting the attention that he wanted, that he longed for. Um, so I saw him at the airport. I think it was actually in the promo in the countdown. I saw him at the airport and I said, "Oh, this guy's been running his mouth." I was fully prepared to smack him up on the airport. Fully prepared. I had no lie. So I said, you know what? 
I just want to find out who you mean. Because that's just who I am. I want to give you the opportunity. I want to find out what's going on. So I went and I sat right in front of him and I said, yo, what's going on? You know, I'm hearing all these things. Everything okay? And he was an extremely nice guy. Like, he was like, yeah, everything's good. He was by himself, of course. Yeah, everything's good. You know, you got something coming up. You know, what's up, bro? Like, you know, we had mutual friends. And so he was so nice, he made me feel like a jerk for even thinking of smacking him up if he said anything crazy at the airport. So, um, and then after that, three weeks later, he starts running his mouth online again. Oh, this guy knows he doesn't want to fight me. And that that was first the first time I really said, man, this guy's a clown. And uh, I just, you know, don't really care for him. So much of the conversation leading up to this fight has been the animosity and talking about your opponent. Do you prefer that? I know it's a weird thing to ask, but do you prefer some of the attention being taken off you and the discourse leading up to this fight? I don't really care. You know, um, I've worked hard to get to the forefront of this sport to be the marquee guy. You know, this is all. When I started out, this was the dream. This was the goal. This was the plan, and, uh, and we're here now. So I don't care whether the attention's on me or not. This is what I, I, I worked for. So he can do. It. I'm glad that he's doing all that. I'm glad that he's made this fight what it is. So you know, it, it's great to have challenges like this. You come up with leaves in this game. It's just something really. No, he absolutely does not believe in the gimmick. That's why he's came out and, and, and he's telling you guys, and I just said it. He's now telling you guys now that, hey, this is just a gimmick. So basically, this guy knows. He knows what's happening. Four times he's been offered this fight and he's turned it down. He knows what's about to take place. So right now, he's trying to find an exit. He's trying to find a way out. Hey, guys, don't hate me when I get killed on Saturday. Please don't hate me. I was just putting on an act, you know, just to entertain you guys. No. If you about that life, you gotta stay about that. You know, have you seen The Rock come out and say, oh man, it was just, I was just being, uh, you know, all this. The Rock went through three different personalities in WWE before he found The Rock, you know. But he didn't come out and, and, and reveal all of that. You know, you, found, you have a man that's already defeated mentally that's looking for a way out. So because of the incident, do you think he deserves the accolades and the attentions of the No! No, I mean, you know, it is what it is. I mean, still a guy acting outlandish. And I, I'm, let's be honest here, he can fight. I'm not disrespecting the fact that this kid can fight. You know, I can respect where respect is due. I'm no hater. He can fight. He's earned the right to be in there with me. But it's my job Saturday night to show him that there's a difference between him and I. Do you think he's got more attention than the champ, the undisputed champ? Absolutely not, because guess what? You know, if I don't have, if, if I'm not the champion, if I'm not willing to fight him, and he gives a shit. He's just another fighter. You know, he's just gonna fight, he's gonna go home and sit at home. But I gotta fight, go home and stare at that shiny belt every day until they call me up again and say, hey, we'd like for you to defend us. Normally when two wrestlers go out and they get a strike, is that something you're really welcoming? Because what do you make of the strike? I welcome everything, and that's, that's the thing, the key with my fight is uh, I'm able to adapt. My mind is, is my mind is, is a different, and I, I surprise myself sometimes with the things that I can do. You know, I'm able to adapt. If it comes down to just striking, he doesn't want that, let's be honest. If it comes down to wrestling, he still thinks he wants that, but he doesn't want that. I mean, you heard it before. When I was going to fight Tyron Woodley, Tyron Woodley said the exact same thing. If it comes down to just wrestling, I would kick your ass. Do this, I would do this. And once you step in that cave with this African lion, things change. Now, is it hard to trash talk someone who you know is not being real? Like it's sort of extremely, like, yeah, <laughs> extremely. It's extremely. Hard. I know a lot of people are saying, "Oh, why aren't you trash talking more? Why are you getting into this?" I don't have to. I'm sitting up here. There's a gold beside me. I, I, I don't have to. My body of work speaks for itself. I don't need to. I understand that we have to be entertainers, but. Sort of, my job is to step in there and entertain you with my skill. You know, so I don't have to do all that gimmick. He had to do that to get here. I didn't have to. Have you seen me do the gimmick? No, never. I just, I just said he got in your head. Did he got in your head at all? Oh, and that's another thing that I keep hearing. People are saying he got in my head. You know, I haven't been competing for years with all these guys, different guys in different stages, and still make it to this point for him to think, oh, he got into my head. At the end of the day, the, the main reason why I do this, I've said this before in several interviews, the main reason why I compete today is for the sheer fact of competition. 
when I left the Olympic Training Center in 2012, I could have went and got a job and, and became a marriage counselor like I wanted to be. You know, I, can't, I could have went back to school and did that, but I still had a burning desire to compete, which is why I'm still here today. Tomorrow, a lot of people are saying that this is, uh, your style is mirror each other. In what way is that sort of an insult to your skill? What way is that less I mean, it, it, it's, uh, it's an insult because um, to the naked eye, it seems the same. We both go hard, we both wrestle pretty well, and we both, you know, throw a lot of record numbers of, of, of punches in our fights. So, to the naked eye, and we both dominate. You know, so to the naked eye, it seems the same, but it's really not. The way that I use my mind, the way that I set things up, the way that I corner guys, the way that I trap them, the way that I make certain guys work is completely different. And you guys will get a front row seat to find that out on Saturday night. You mentioned that he's not in your head. I fully believe you. Did you do anything to prepare to make sure you didn't get bothered? You've seen great fighters in the past who've gotten thrown off by the play. Not as soon as but other fighters were cold. No, no. At, at the end of the day, um, it's hard to be a professional. You know, um, and, and that's a, I'm a, I'm a professional in every sense, whether it's in and outside of the, the practice room. I try to be the best professional that I can be. Um, so, no, I didn't have to do anything. For Tyron Woodley, I brought in nobody. I didn't do any of that. I just, I, this is my routine. And what I've been doing, you know, has slowly elevated me to this point. So, why would I change it for this clown just because he had a louder, you know, louder voice than the others? You know, there's, there's no change. I just continue to do what I do. And, uh, you know, God willing, I'm going to step in this Saturday night and I'm going to make it happen. At the uh, Dominance MMA Media Day, you were showing me your DMs of all the, uh, the fans uh, messaging you about home. Is that ramped up and closer to the front? Uh, a little bit, you think? A little bit. No, it, it's, uh, it's definitely ramped up, but... You know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many people want me to, to, to go out there and kill this guy, I actually have to do it. So, you know, part of being a professional is learning how to block that off and step in there and take care of business.